Let's talk about thinking in your target language. Now, the basic premise of this is that you want to use phrases without a direct translation from your native language or English. And so it doesn't quite matter how you learn the foreign language, whether it be through a textbook, through speaking with other native speakers, through watching TV, listening to songs, whatever it may be. When you get the language into you, you should be able to use it without making a direct translation. And the way you can tell if someone is using a direct translation or using logic-based thinking to speak is do they sound like Ore wa subarashi? Or do they sound more like Watashi wa Atama? Is it ga or wa? I think it's, yeah, it's ga. I des. Which one do you sound like? Basically, in the first example, it just comes out fluidly. I have an idea that I want to express and I just say it. So in this case, I'm thinking in the foreign language, in this case, Japanese. In the second example, I'm using logic and I'm thinking about which words to use from the English sentence that I have in my head. So I have uh, an English sentence in my head and I think, okay, what's the Japanese word for that? Which grammar particle do I use? And then how do I end the sentence properly? And this basically doesn't work very well because you're going to have slow, broken speech if you're constantly calculating in your head which words to use. In this case, you're almost trying to speak a language like mathematics or physics or something like that, where you're applying these rules to the language instead of just naturally processing it and having it come out. Now, why does this happen? Why do you speak in a slow manner, in a broken manner? It's because you don't know enough of the language and you haven't gotten enough exposure to it. Because if you get enough exposure to the language, you hear enough examples, it becomes second nature. And let me give you an example of this. For example, in Spanish, if you want to say, what is your name? You could say, como te llamas, which is, how do you call yourself? But the more direct translation is cuál es tu nombre uh, which is literally which is your name if you want to say what is your name what's in spanish is que so you could say que es tu nombre but this is just not how it's said in spanish and if you say it this way you would sound unnatural the same way that when i say which is your name you probably would understand what i'm saying but it sounds unnatural the same way, if you say, que es tu nombre in Spanish, they would probably understand what you're saying, but it would sound very unnatural. And so how do you get to the point where you just know to say, cual es tu nombre, which is your name, instead of, que es tu nombre, what is your name? Basically, you have to repeat or have repetition of this sentence pattern so many times that cual es tu nombre just sounds more natural. I think this is probably how you learn your native language as well, is that when you're a kid, you hear so many examples that after a while, certain patterns in the language just begin to sound right. And it's only through repetition by hearing something so many times that it feels right when someone says it the right way. And when they say it a little bit differently, like, which is your name? It just sounds off. And so we want to develop this same sixth sense in our foreign language to be able to speak it fluidly and just think in the language without doing a direct translation or use logic-based rules to try to say the phrase or sentence in the target language. So this can only be done through enough time in the foreign language. I think this is one of the reasons why comprehensible input is so important is because it's not just that you're getting input that you understand, 
but it's that you are repeatedly getting input over a long period of time. And it's through this process that you build up the sense of what sounds natural, what is natural, and then you're able to speak. This is the same process that I use for mnemonics. A lot of people say, I don't want to use mnemonics because they're a visual image. You have to come up with something clever to connect the sounds of the foreign word to the English meaning. For example, in one of my prior videos, I talked about the Arabic word alik. Lik means empty stomach in modern standard Arabic. And I came up with the mnemonic that the food reeks so badly that even on an empty stomach, you don't want to eat it. And so this was a clever way for me to tie the word reek to empty stomach. Now, do I want to be using this mnemonic in a full-blown conversation with a native? Probably not, because it takes time for me to think of the mnemonic in my head and say, okay, what was the word for empty stomach? Oh yeah, the food reeks so badly, I don't want to eat it on an empty stomach. It's reek. But you want to get to the point where you just think, all right, I want to express empty stomach, it's reek. And the way you get to that is by only using the mnemonic as a stepping stone. It's just one step closer to having the word naturally come out and to think naturally in the word. Mnemonics are a good stepping stone, but ultimately you will and you should forget them. You should get to a point where you don't even think of the mnemonic anymore. You just think, uh, you hear reek and you think, oh, empty stomach. Or you want to express empty stomach and you just think reek. So that's the basic premise. When you are speaking in a foreign language, you don't want to use logic-based rules and think, uh, oh, should I use the present tense? Should I try to uh, use the third person ending for the singular? Uh, what is that in Spanish? Oh, it's a. Ah. Oh, but it's an ER verb, so we're going to use a. Eh. No, you basically want to get so natural that it just flows out because you're thinking in the language instead of trying to manipulate the language from English while using logic-based thinking. So the other thing that you want to keep in mind is uh, when you learn a language, it's not just that you're learning new words and even new grammar to express your ideas from English. It's actually that you're beginning to learn a new way to think. For example, in Japanese, uh, the verb comes at the end of the sentence, which at first is a little bit tricky for English speakers because in English, the verb comes in the middle. For example, if you want to say, I eat lunch in Japanese, you would say, I lunch eat. Uh, if you want to say, I go to the store in Japanese, you would say, I to the store go. So it's a little bit tricky, but even furthermore than just converting from English into the proper Japanese phrasing is the fact that Japanese people have a different way of expressing themselves. They have a different culture. And one example I can give of that uh, that we don't find as hard-coded in English is the levels of politeness. There are levels of politeness. Uh, there are, uh, there's keigo, which is a Japanese term for polite language in Japanese. They have entirely different um, verb tenses, entirely different words even, depending on if you're speaking to say your boss at work or your friends or your uh, child or your nephew or you know whatever the case may be. Um, this we don't have hard-coded in English. We do have something similar in that we have different ways of expressing things to make it more polite. For example, instead of saying, uh, you want to eat, you might say, would you like to eat? And that makes it a little bit, sound a little bit more polite because it might be a little bit more indirect, but it's still not as hard coded in Japanese. So the point is to be able to speak Japanese properly, you need to study the culture and also how Japanese people think so that you can express yourself 
in the same way that they do. The only way that you can do this is by really immersing yourself in the culture and studying how do people express themselves, how do they communicate, how do they talk with themselves, and through that time period in which you study, you begin to develop in yourself your own, let's call it um, brain or your own mind in the target language that then you can use to see what sounds natural, what does not sound natural, and to be able to express yourself in the target language like a native would. So I hope that helps you and elucidates this concept for you. Thank you so much and we'll talk again soon.